Once on the verge of collapse, Korea cinema has today emerged as an international economic and cultural powerhouse, becoming the most dominant cinema in Asia. Today, it is common to see Korean films to be listed among the top 10 films in Japan, Hong Kong, and Malaysia. Most recently, one film stands out as one of the most influential South Korean films in modern times. In South Korea alone, it has attracted more than 12 million viewers so far, making it the nation's 10 most watched film of all times. It was also South Korea entry in the foreign language category at the 90th Academy Awards. The film that I am referring to is A Taxi Driver, directed by Jang Hoon. The film depicts the journey of a local taxi driver who carried a German reporter to the city of Guangzhou and witnessed the horror of the military crackdown on the pro-democracy uprising of May 1980. This film has made a tremendous impact culturally and nationally. Not only does it entertain, it had facilitated to recreate a cultural identity by visually revisiting the country's national history. In other words, it has become a part of the narrative of the nation. But why is narrative of the nation so important? In the publication, Modernity, An Introduction to Modern Society, it is stated that it is through the narrative of the nation that national cultures are built upon. They construct identities by producing meanings about the nation. In the same way, a film may construct the identity of the nation and gives meaning to the notion of national cinema. In the simplest term, national cinema can be defined as a film that is produced within a nation-state. But as Andrew Hickson pointed out in his writing and title, The Concept of National Cinema, this definition can be extended in a much more comprehensive way. Similarly, the narrative of the nation is one way in enabling us to identify, understand, and give meaning to the definition of national cinema. And the narrative of a taxi driver is a very good example. Against the backdrop of Guangzhou massacre, the film represented the two polarizing political ideologies between communism and democracy, or in other words, between the North and the South Korea. A Taxi Driver is not the first film in Korea to tackle the Guangzhou uprising as the main subject. In 2007, the film May 18, directed by Kim Ji-hoon, explored the same subject. Before that, The Old Garden and Peppermint Candy also deal with similar theme. A Taxi Driver gains credibility from being based on a true story. This fact is further boosted by the closing footage that features the real German reporter returning to a democratized South Korea in 2003. Collectively, these films gave colors to the otherwise vague way of life of the olden days. They romanticize the nostalgia of that era. They connect the past and the present. But who is responsible for writing and telling the narrative of the nation? A first theory argues that a director is the author of the film. And taking this into consideration, the narrative of the nation is naturally the sole responsibility of the author or the director of the film. A Taxi Driver was directed by Jang Hoon, the only director in Korea whose films has been nominated not once, but twice to represent South Korea in its Oscar contention. As a director, Jang's first venture in feature film was Rough Cut, a gangster film written and produced by his then mentor Kim Ki Duk, a reputable Korean author. Although the film was more commercial than the rest of the film that he directed, it set the foundation for Jang Hoon's signature style. Jang's second film was the blockbuster Secret Reunion, a war thriller about a former South Korean agent and a North Korean spy who form an unlikely partnership. It went on to become the second highest grossing film of 2010 in South Korea. His third movie, The Frontline, deal with the same theme of the North and South Korean politics. The Korean War being the center stage, it featured the final leg of the battle for Aerok Hill between the two sides. 
The film was Jang Boon's first Korean official Oscar submission of the year 2012. With The Taxi Driver, although it is not a war movie per se, nor does it deal with the South and the North Korean spies, it still shares the same underlying tones of Korean history that Jang Hoon has explored after his first film. Similarly, the Gwangju Massacre represented the two polarizing political ideologies that separated the North and the South Korea. From the author point of view, they clearly feature Jang Hoon's signature style, narrative and social crisis. His films are male-centric, with dual protagonist narratives, and highlights the social ills against the backdrop of Korean history. Films being a business as much as art, national film or national cinema is not to be mistaken as to be a historically accurate representation. As any filmmaker will attest, when creating something based on the history of the nation, filmmaker does not have complete liberty. Certain facts must be there. But at the same time, filmmaker must not abandon their continuous desire to narrate a film with their own styles, signatures, nuances, and authorship, just like Jang Hoon successfully achieved in all his films.